like to ask you to be sure that your cell phones and noise-making devices are off. They ask that no smartphones or cameras be used in the service. The words to the hymns that we'll be singing are in your insert of your bulletin, and Hoyt and Sarah would like for you to sing with them at that time. Please be seated. <clears throat> Dear beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God, in the presence of these family and friends, to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. We celebrate one of life's greatest moments, to give recognition to the worth and beauty of love, and to add our best wishes and blessings to the union of Sarah Ann Nolan and Michael Hoyt. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Okay. Okay. Sarah and Hoyt have asked that Hoyt's sisters read to us from the Word of God. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. 
It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Thank you. Hoyt, Sarah, I'd like to talk to you about the rest of your life. The rest of your life is man and wife. First Timothy 4 8 says, Bodily exercises of little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things that holds promise in this life, the life to come. Godliness is just living life God's way. Romans 12, 2 says that you might prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. You can't improve upon the experience of God's will. And God's will primarily centers around the issue of relationships. His first is for the world. He says he's not willing that any should perish. That's not his desire. And the solution to that is, as many as receive him to them, they gave the Lord to become children of God. When a person recognizes that their absence of holiness and his holiness results in separation, and his solution is his son, and they receive him as their savior, the problem is taken care of. And then you have, you're his child. God's desired will for you as his child is in John 15, 12. Love one another as I've loved you. God's desire is that we live a life of loving him, loving others. However, in Romans 5, 5, it says that the love of God is shed or brought in our heart by the Holy Spirit. You want to accomplish this supernaturally, not naturally, because the natural love that we have will be insufficient for the journey that you're on in order to extend the love that he desires. And so you want to operate within his love and power. And in the precious passage of John 7, 37 through 39, where he tells us how to experience the one who resides in us when you heard the word of truth, the gospel, and believed you were sealed in him by the Holy Spirit, to be released in you. And it says that, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. As the scripture says, he who believes in me out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Holy Spirit, that they who believe in him were received, for the Spirit was not yet given, for Christ was not yet glorified. He just gives you a threefold movement to see the one who resides in you to be released. When that occurs, you operate in the love and the power of the Holy Spirit. And the issue is live for him, not yourself. He does not empower you to do your will, but his will. And he does not flow through a dirty vessel. We have the privilege of confessing our sins. This is posi positionally, we're forgiven forever. Experientially, we confess our sin, he forgives and cleanses. And then, as you receive him, so walk ye in him. We received him by faith. We trust him to live through us by faith. At that moment, his spirit flows through us. It's not us, it's him. And it's his love that you're loving with each other. When you wake up in the mornings, one of the first things you want to do in your life is to go from operating in just your love and power, but his, that movement will serve you well throughout all your life. Let's pray. Father, you are beyond our comprehension. You had no beginning. You have no end. You're perfect in all your attributes. And you have brought us into being by the just mere expression of your will. We cannot comprehend your capability. And the compassion that you extend to us is beyond anything we would ever deserve or ask. We just truly bend the knee with humble hearts and grateful to you. Thank you for the world of relationships, and thank you for having brought Michael and Sarah together at this moment and this time for this purpose. I ask that you would so move on their behalf that as we follow the service, the Spirit of God will unite them in a way that only you can. We have privilege of participating, but you are the one who causes it to occur. And so we commit the service, the time, their lives, their future into your care and keeping. We celebrate the extension of your goodness and loving kindness on their behalf, your faithfulness to so move. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Would you repeat after me? I will take you, Sarah. I will take you, Sarah. To be my wife. To be my wife. To heaven to hope. 
from this day forward, from this day forward. for better or for worse, better for, worse. For, richer or for, poor, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, sickness and in health. To, love and to, cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part. According, to God's holy law, according to God's holy law, in the presence of God, in the presence of God. I make this vow. I, Sarah, take you Hoyt. I, Sarah, take you Hoyt. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better for worse. For better for worse. For richer for poor. For richer for poor. In sickness and health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Accord, according to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. Are there rings? Thank you very much. <clears throat> These rings are a symbol of the unbroken circle of love. Love freely given has no beginning and has no end. No giver, no receiver. For each is, is the giver and each is the receiver. May these rings always remind you of the vows you have taken. Hoyt, do you take Sarah to be your wife? Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect her, forsaking all others and holding only to her forevermore? Sarah, do you take Hoyt to be your husband? Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect him, forsaking all others, holding only unto him forevermore? I do. As a symbol of your unity, you will now light the unity candle. The two separate candles symbolize your separate lives and families. Lighting the center candle represents your two lives now being joined together as one.
and Sarah. Inasmuch as you have consented to be joined together in the holy state of matrimony, have pledged and sealed your vows by the giving and the receiving of rings, the presence of both God and this company is with great pleasure that I now pronounce you husband and wife, what God hath joined together, that no man put asunder. You may kiss your bride. It is with great joy and honor that I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Sims. Please join in the singing of Crown Him with Many Crowns. and Sarah would like to invite you to the reception at Fiddler's Green and the directions are in your bulletin. They ask that you be very careful on these two lane roads. Pictures will be taken shortly so they ask that you might move swiftly and when you arrive please help yourself to dinner. You're dismissed.